How you doing? I'm good. Good times had by all. This week we're doing the 1997 science fiction classic, Starship Trooper, starring Casper Van Dien. You know him, don't you? Denise Richards, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, NPH. Michael Ironside, Clancy Brown. It's an all-star cast. You Clancy remember Brown. them? Yeah. You remember them, don't you? Yeah. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, each week on the B-Movie Club, we discuss certain guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the past. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B-Movie Club, and give me the big thumbs up. Also go to our page on YouTube, KD9575, and hit the subscribe button. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on the B-Movie Club. Starship Troopers. This takes place in the future at some point. Well, it takes place on Earth. We know this. Uh, and evidently, this the world is like kind of one government, it looks like to me, and it's kind of a fascistic government. Something called Civilians and Citizens. Oh, that's where you're Right? That's See what I'm... Okay. Civilians are just, I guess, people who are alive, eventually, <laughs> right. right? Just taking up space. Just taking up space. <laughs> to become a citizen, however, you have to volunteer for two years of federal service, which may include joining the military. Right. Now, they're at war... So with that you this... can have babies and stuff. And... Exactly. If you're a citizen, then you have more uh, privileges. Yeah. Like, you, you can get a child having permit easier, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, right. Um, anyway... So they're at war with this planet on the other side of the galaxy called Klondathu, which is made up of crazy giant bugs of some sort. Yeah. Uh, so our hero, central character, Johnny Rico, is just graduating from high school, or the equivalent, at the ripe age of 30, it looks like, <laughs> along with his friends Dizzy, who's kind of like she's secretly in love with him, Carmen, who's like his girlfriend, uh, the pretty mean girl kind of thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty mean. and their other buddy, Carl... Who has some kind of psychic abilities, I guess, right? Indeed. Right, he does something. All right. Uh, so they all join the military or the service, basically. They're all, but they're all shipped off to different parts of the galaxy, okay? Karma wants to be a pilot, so she goes off to pilot academy or whatever. Yeah. Carl goes off because of his psychic ability, goes the off and joins. Games and strategy. Games and, games and, that's, games and something like that. Games and theory. Games and, something like that. Games I don't know. and tiddlywinks. I don't know, something like that. So he goes off, which is kind of like what we later discover is kind of like the SS, essentially, the Gestapo or something. Yeah, so the overtones of uh, Nazi Germany is right. prevalent in the film, which is intentional. They, they lay it on pretty thick, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and then later, Dizzy shows up with uh, Johnny. Uh, we'll never both... see each other again after this day. And they see each other like seven times. Yeah. Right, exactly. So they show up. They're both joining the infantry, which is essentially the people who don't have any other skills, essentially. Yeah. He's flunking out of math. 35% math. math. <laughs> it's math like, wah, wah, yeah, wah. Right. wah. Yeah. So he has, he's forced to join the mobile infantry. Um, so then there's a long montage of training, and he's, you know, he's going to become a squad leader. Things aren't working out for him so great. There's an accident during a training exercise. Or the guy who got his head shot off. That was very sad. Yeah, it didn't work out for him. So um, he's like, you know what? My parents didn't want me to join anyway. I'm quitting. I'm out of here. So he's about so to he leave. calls his parents. I'm out of here. Oh, what's that strange? <laughs> Darkness. Sun's yeah. The sun went out. <laughs> so as he's talking to his parents, the bugs, as they're called, the crazy alien insects, yeah, right. have a lot, they shoot asteroids across the galaxy at Earth. Now, ignoring the fact that it would take how many light years for these asteroids yeah. to travel, mm. it's the future. Right. Uh, his hometown of Buenos Aires is destroyed. Yeah. So his friends, his family, everything he knows is destroyed. So he re-enlists. He can't go home. Can't. So he goes off. Now he's like, now he's gung-ho. So there's a lot of battles. I don't want to spoil everything. I don't... Uh, originally, this movie was called oh, yeah. Bug Hunt on Outpost 9. Okay. It had nothing to do with the famous Robert Heinlein novel, uh, Starship Troopers. But somebody uh, noticed that there were some similarities. They just basically optioned the script and plopped it on top of, uh, optioned the book and plopped it on top of the script they already had. Changed some of the character names, mm -hmm. added some of that kind of uh, fascist imagery, what they're going for, and, and now it's Starship Troopers. Bada bing, bada but, Starship Troopers. That's what I'm talking about. So they brought in uh, Paul Verhoeven who had successfully done RoboCop, <laughs> he had done uh, Total Recall. So he, they brought him in, and he didn't even know it was a book. He was like, oh, this is a book, interesting. And then finally somebody said, hey, check it out. He said he read two chapters and stopped because he found it boring and depressing. <laughs> so Paul Verhoeven is a Dutch filmmaker, and he wanted to make sure there was a lot of that kind of uh, Nazi imagery as kind of a satire of, like, beware of kind of going into the fascism. Because he grew up in... Occupied. Occupied uh, Holland or the Netherlands. Holland. They brought in Casper Van Dien yeah. to play Johnny Rico, who's kind of an unknown actor and sadly remained. And PH was uh, uh, eighth, eighth on the... Neil Patrick Harris was brought in. He hadn't done Doogie Howser in like eight or nine years. And this is eight or nine years before he started doing How I Met Your Mother. So this is right in uh, kind of a, a weird period for him. Now, he's like 25 or 26 in this movie, and he still looked like he was about 15. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. whatever, you know. They just graduated middle school. <laughs> they brought in uh, Dina Meyer to play Dizzy Lopez, Dizzy Flores, excuse me, who was kind of the unrequited love of Johnny Rico. Like, she was secretly in love with him. And she was about 35 when Not she did so this. Not so secret. I mean, everyone knew. Everybody knew. Prior to this, a couple years prior, she had played um, uh, Brandon's... Uh, Love interest slash teacher on 90210. Mm -hmm. So she's old enough to play like the college professor, and now a few years later she's a high school student. Mm. So there you go. So they also brought in uh, Denise Richards, who had been in a few roles here and there, and th she did this, and that kicked her off to doing wild things and kind of put her on the map. Uh, they hired uh, Michael Ironside to play the uh, teacher slash his lieutenant yeah. in, the, uh, in the military. Which he played oh, Richter in Total Recall and was in many other things, Scanners. The other dude stuff. from uh, Shawshank. And, uh, Shawshank, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. He played the mean old uh, prison warden in Shawshank. Same role, pretty much. He was Rawhide in Buckaroo Banzai, and I'm going to blow your mind. He was the voice of Mr. Krabs what? on SpongeBob SquarePants. To again? this day, he's <laughs> Mr. Crazy. Krabs. And every now and again, he'd talk like this and sound like Mr. Krabs. Yeah. If you have kids or if you just really like... Or if you like crap. If you like the wah wah. So it's like I said, it's an all star cast. It's good. Now there's an interesting thing. So you got the love, unrequited love from Dizzy to Johnny. Johnny is kind of still in love with his high school girlfriend, Carmen, played by Denise Richards. Right. She's got this thing going on with the other lieutenant, yeah. Xander. They have Xander. a thing going on there. And they showed this to uh, test audiences, and they hated Denise Richards. They did oh, not man. like her because they thought, a, she's not a good actress. Number one, I'm just I'm I'm filling the blanks here. Number one, she's not a great actress. Uh, but also because they felt like she shouldn't be that conflicted between Johnny and Xander. 
So they kind of tried to downplay as much of the romance between her and Xander as they could. There's just kind of knowing glances mm. and stuff like that. But there wasn't... Initially, there was more than that. Now, later in the movie, spoiler alert, there was supposed to be a scene at the end where they kind of kiss, uh, Carmen and Johnny kiss and kind of rekindle. But people thought that that was bad on a lot of levels. Bad because... A, she had basically dumped him earlier, right? Dumped Johnny Rico earlier. Did, was, and it, was it set at the at Dizzy's funeral or? It, right, over I her mean, corpse. Yeah, right? Uh, so she Terrible. dumped him earlier. Now she was going to get him back even though he had already, spoiler alert, hooked up with Dizzy <laughs> and Dizzy was killed by a bug, spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, so people thought that was bad. So they're like, okay, we'll just have him high five at the end and call it a day. Right. Computer graphics, the CG in this is is good for the time mm -hmm. and um, gets the job done yeah I mean it's it's just a, it's a fun show if you like that sort of uh, creepy bug crawly thing we were laughing about yeah. the fact that yeah. you still had to basically put these soldiers on the ground like they couldn't have tanks they couldn't bomb them from the air <laughs> they couldn't shoot rockets from orbit yeah. they literally had to put down like soldiers on the ground with ro like machine guns or whatever, yeah, rifles. The asteroid can travel right. billions of light years without anyone noticing it, but you can't get a, you can't. an airlift or something. <laughs> you have to just put these 18 year olds down there with guns that don't seem to do a whole heck of a lot. You have to unload an entire clip to... to yeah, killing, yeah, no effective like armor piercing bullets for these guys. It's, it's like, hopeless. here, here's a 22. This movie currently has a 63% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, it's kind of polarizing. People either really love this movie for kind of a cultish, you know, uh, guilty pleasure kind of thing, or they really hate it. Again, a lot of the performances weren't great, like two of the leads, <laughs> a little shaky, people kind of age inappropriate, oh, yeah. things like that. But there's, I mean, people pop, you see Jake Busey is in half this movie. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Jake Busey. I mean, obviously we learned that teeth are Teeth for days. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they took uh, Gary Busey's, uh, you know, DNA and created a perfect clone. <laughs> so good times. I enjoyed this movie. Granted, I could kind of, uh, I don't think I enjoyed it that much when I first saw it, but it kind of grew on me over time. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it really put Denise Richards on the map. But if you look at her IMDb page, it's just kind of, you know, she did wild things and not much else. She no was one a Bond girl. Anything else. No one remembers yeah. anything. Uh, and of course, Neil Patrick Harris, now a big star, hosting yeah. the Oscars. Good times. Uh, people rarely call him Doogie anymore, so mm -hmm. that's a, a step in the right direction. Next week, I'm moving away from the science fiction thing. My sister's going to be hosting the show with me next week, Erin. And she's requested a German film. This is great. I know we're going to have people lining up to watch this. Called Wings of Desire. I love Wings of Desire. Shut up. <laughs> it, they made an American version of this movie called City of Angels that had Nicolas I Cage love City of Angels. as an angel and he has a romance with Meg Ryan. But we won't be talking about that one. Mm. We'll be talking about the original German version, so check that out. It is not streaming on Netflix. Uh, you probably have to go to Amazon Instant Streaming something. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Do your best. Okay, just do your best. If you happen to have a copy, dust it off. But what are the chances of that? <laughs> okay? So, go forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Go to our page on YouTube and subscribe. It's totally free. And follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. Don't forget to send any favorite scenes, favorite quotes, questions, and comments. And of we the, may talk about of it the on the German show. Yeah. Of the German film. Yeah, do that. Please do. As you know, we end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here it is. I've got one rule. Everyone fights, no one quits. Sounds like two rules, though. It's very sad. It's a good times had by all. <laughs> Check it out next week, Wings of Desire. I want to thank Tori for joining us. Thank you again. We'll have to have you back soon. Thank you, and be well. Mm -hmm.